So what's up? How you doing today? We're going to take a look at how we can make our chord sound a lot more bluegrass. And we're going to just focus on G, C, D. That's most of what we need to get through a lot of bluegrass tunes or styles that are similar. It doesn't have to be the exact style. But if we take an open G, right? C. D. We're going to change it to this. So let's dive in real quick. So if we have our open G, right? Notice the difference of sound of this versus this one. This one's got a much bigger, more open sound. Uh, from any kind of style, it's maybe like folk or something. But this one, it's got a, like a tighter, closed sound. And it's really good for more rhythm. It kind of opens things up. It's like a thinner, voicing of the chord rather than being this bigger thing and that allows you to be faster and more rhythmic and kind of cut through and that's for for real traditional bluegrass that's what we're going for right so what is going on we're taking our regular open g and we're getting rid of this string right here getting rid of that b the second fret fifth string just get it out entirely lean over on purpose and mute that string so instantly by doing that it, it thins it up. We're gonna get rid of the third entirely. This is the, the B is the third. It's kind of the, the note that makes it sound kind of bright and major. So we're actually gonna get rid of that. So technically it's not gonna be a G major, it's gonna be a G5. It's basically a power chord. It's like this. You might think of like rock or blues. So it's that chord, but just played in a different way. It's kind of opened up. But all it is is a G5 is a G and a D. It's what they call the root and the fifth, and that's why it's called the G5, or a power chord. So we're taking off that B, that major third that makes it sound kind of bright. So we're getting rid of that. That's kind of that low down muddy, gives a little more separation there to the bottom. And then up here, this B, the second string, we're getting rid of that and we're making that a D. So right here, so some people put their G like this anyways. Like, like David Gilmore, he's always playing his Gs like that instead of this. Still the same chord, just a different way of playing it. So by doing that and getting rid of this, that's it, voila. So another reason for playing chords like that with this style of music is that without the third, it's a little more ambiguous if it's a major or minor chord. It definitely lends itself to sounding a little more like a major in most situations, but is a little more flexibility. So when you go to solo, you know, the major pentatonic or major scale totally works, but the minor works a little better too because you've got that space. There's no third in there. There's no major third or minor third. So when you solo over it, you got a little more freedom to kind of go one way uh, or the other. So that really opens things up. Moving on to the C, we do the same thing here. We get rid of the third, which is this note right here, the E, lean over on purpose, and we can just do this, and then get rid of the E on top. So it's certainly smaller, but more bluegrassy than... Right? And sometimes what happens in bluegrass too is you're playing along... And you might throw in a little embellishments. So that adds a little more interest than just having this kind of small, thin chord, you know? But that, that's a little more down the road, you know, adding things on there. First, we're gonna start off getting these voicings if these are new to us. So we've got that, but we can also, if we get rid of that top note, we can add a G instead. So that's the same as this string right here. So you're just doubling it up, up an octave. So. That's nice when you go from G to C because you have this on top, which I should say also, you don't have to play this too. You could just do these right here. Make the G even small. But say we do have this on top. And then going to that, you link them together, glues them together. So it's a nice smooth sound. Instead of going like this, the normal way. It sounds nice, but you start to really notice that 
this top note kind of leaps far. It's actually not that smooth, even though that's endless songs. People play it that way. So by going, that glues it together, but then make it more bluegrassy. Last one, D, easiest thing to do, take off the third here, which is gonna be on top, up here, this F sharp. So now, it's that. You know, like some ACDC tunes, you know. Back in black or something, they're just taking off the, uh, the thirds, it's just those open power chords, so it's the same exact thing. These three right here. If we want, we can add the fifth on top like this, which we get up here. So you have to change the fingers, stretch out. And there you go. So what I recommend is, you know, work out these voicings. You know, really make sure each string, you know, you're getting the sound that you want and really notice how they sound and go back and forth between the open versions and these more closed sounding versions and see the difference in the sound and try out the little variations like the D this way, adding that on, C this way, adding that on, G like this. So you've always got the top string that you can kind of take on or off and toy around with the different versions and go, you know, different orders, G to D, G to C, all that stuff. Get real familiar with it and if you like it, make it a part of your sound and your vocabulary. So good luck and I'll see you in the next video.